Hey there everyone, Shadow here, and welcome back to Surviving Mars. So, we had a couple problems last episode. I feel like, you know, there was just so many problems, and it kind of turned into like a black hole of resources that I don't think I would have ever actually been able to catch up. I would have been able to fix a lot of problems, but I don't think I ever would have been able to, you know, catch up. It, it would have took me so many hours, and I would have lost so many, like, recording possibilities. I just felt that it would be better in today's episode. We just start over, take the knowledge that I've learned, and I've also done a little bit of playing on the side, so I have a better idea of the game. And definitely there's some stuff I want to go over that I was actually kind of mistaken on the first couple of episodes. But anyhow, we're going to get into it here. So I'm playing as Europe. Which, uh, you start with 6,000, you get 400 research per day, and you have only two rockets, but you start with five extra technology. And every time you research a tech, you get, re or you, uh, you get funding, and then every time it's a breakthrough, you get double that funding. So pretty much every sponsor has their own way of making money. So instead of US just randomly giving you money every now and then, you get... You have to research tech for Europe to get money. And we're going to do the politician. Which is any money that we do get is increased by 20%. And we start off with the money granting tech. And that the final countdown logo. We got a, the just mystery is random. I have yet to figure out the actual mysteries. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go for a much more normal difficulty game. Right now it's at 100 and. 10 percent we're going to try and get that up to maybe like 150 and unlike the american rocket we uh don't have a whole lot of room this time around so we're going to want to change up some stuff i'm going to want to have a drone hub i want to have a moisture evaporator and i want to have a fuel refinery that much is a given um let's see so we're not going to have a rover this time we're not going to have a transport this time just some drones, 15 polymer, 15 machine parts, 10 electronics, and 3 probes. That all looks pretty good for a start. I mean, if anything, I could sit here and downgrade this one. Actually, no. I'd have to... Okay, no. See, concrete weighs an absolute crap ton, so... We'll just, we'll get concrete up right away like normal. I was going to try and shoot for a power bank right in the beginning, but we're not going to bother with that. And that, we'll just kind of look around here for a minute, figure out like 150-ish range. I know there's some on here that like you can get the freaking difficulty up to like 500 something on the hardest settings. But uh, let's just take a look here. That's 220, that's 280. So yeah, and some of these areas are actually named, so you can figure out where the difficulty is. Alright guys, so actually it took me a minute to find one, and I got up to 190 actually, and I feel pretty good about that. And uh, we, got decent, we got decent amount of metal, max on concrete, max on water, and I kind of wanted to go for some more threats just to showcase the different threats, so... We're going to have some dust devils, we're going to have some dust storms, we're going to have, you know, a decent amount of meteorites. And cold waves, we're not going to have almost any, so we're not going to have to worry about that. But alright, let's get in here, and let's, uh, you know, get some basic stuff built up here. So I'll catch you guys here in a second. Hey there guys, I just wanted to uh, showcase this a little bit here. So this is a dust devil. And it's more or less like a tornado and uh, what it'll do is anything that goes through or by probably like in this much of a radius around it first off it'll slow these drones down like crazy and it'll get them the dust accumulation will go through the roof and it will shut them down now I think if it goes directly over them it might destroy them I'm not a hundred percent sure but, uh, yeah, that's that's what's up with the dust devil there. I've also had a few close calls with some meteors already. But, uh, yeah, this is what I got done so far as far as the base goes. Now, it is day five already. And, uh, 
There's more to the barrel. Okay, cool. So we got drones, a couple of this, a couple of these. Okay, cool. Actually, while while I'm on the tech screen here, so I come to figure out that like I know originally I said the tech tree is kind of random, and that's it's like so so random because uh I think the these first few like if you have any additional text they're randomly picked like so because normally you only start with these first five unlocked now i had these additional five because of being europe but it seems that sooner or later the tree does start to go back to a normal pace like medium domes should be like right in here somewhere and i think it's just the starting tech that's kind of random because I should not have either one of these upgrades yet as far as the ran like if they were just in the tech tree. I think anytime you unlock stuff through doing, you know, scans, I think the scanning chance is random. But if you're just, you know, researching things outright, it follows the tree system. At least that's gonna be my outtake on it, because I have yet to notice anything else, you know, besides that. But right now, so far, I got pretty much a basic layout of a little base. That's actually a lot of concrete pretty close, which that kind of ruins my plan. I was hoping to build out here as the colony, but that's a huge concrete deposit right there. So, yeah, things are getting a little bit strange out here as building. But we're going to try and get water up, and we're going to try and get fuel online here. And then we should kind of be back to like a basic startup. But all right, guys, I'll see you here in a second. All right, guys, so we actually finally have everything set up here, minus some water. Because now nah, I got the dome up, but that's that's gonna be solved here in a minute as soon as that pipe's built. But uh, yeah, so we have the dome back up here. And uh, I also got this really cool scan here that gave me some rare metals. So that's going to be a first for me. I've never actually gotten rare metals before. So there's that. But uh, we got the dome back up here. And we're going to focus on this here for a minute. So instead of going absolutely crazy trying to do more or less all these, like, trying to make the dome made for just a specific purpose we're going to just kind of start off with like just literally the basics here and that's going to be we'll do the nursery actually let's get the farm up first all right so yeah there's the farm so we have living quarters farm and we're going to add in a diner. We'll have that facing this last door here. We'll have the infirmary. We'll have... And then we'll have the art workshop, even though we're not making polymer yet. Just for something they have that shopping need met. And then we'll give them a little freaking small garden. And then we could do the school and nursery segment as well. But uh, I think I'm going to skip out on the school and nursery for right now. And that's not what I want to click on. And we are going to get ourselves... We could do the research labs. I'm actually trying to figure out how I want to do this dome up. Because let's see, we got... That's 28 people. We want to make sure, essentially, we can fit everybody in here. Because I, I don't want to do, like, the traveling the domes bit. That that was a little bit too much micromanagement. Um, I guess, technically, we could do the nursery here. The nursery and the school here. Just to get that out of the way. Because, I mean, if you do start having kids, they can just come over here. And then we'll do... 
We don't want to get into research yet because right now my research is crazy and I will show that in a minute here. Let's see, what else can we get? Can we shove in here? Uh, you know, I'm, I guess I'll just throw in like a... Uh... No, I don't want to do a hydroponic farm. I'll just throw in a grocer. And a... I'll just do like a really big park or something. Do a lake and a small garden. And that'll be everything for right now. So we're gonna let this all get built up here and then we'll be back here in a second with all this. I also have a meteor shower going on. Luckily it's over there. Actually, I what I get sidetracked here um the tech screen <laughs> as you can see it's only day 14 i thought it was 11 so 14 it's day 14 i got majority of the tech done or caught back up almost and that is because i've been outsourcing like nobody's business see the thing with the europe and the politician selected you get retarded money for everything you research so essentially you research something then you outsource you research more you outsource like it's just it's very it's a very good setup that i've found so far as far as the nation that you choose to start with and what career background but uh because i mean i had medium i already have medium domes set up i have the increased storage capacity right now i'm trying to get a bigger rocket and then down here i already have the uh the power accumulator that's the last thing we researched but i got like the farms done the crops done almost everything's been done already and once that's the biggest thing that's taken up a lot of points if anything i actually want to research this no that's a lot but yeah i've been outsourcing like crazy and now we have the dome back up and this time around it should work a lot better i still need to work on getting more storage facilities that's another thing I might as well go over while I'm at it is I only had like a couple of tanks and storage areas set up you want lots of storage because when dust storms come through on this map they shut off the moxie which so you're not making oxygen and they shut down your water accumulator bits so you have no no income at all so you want to be able to make sure to keep everything up and running which these actually need to be upgraded because i'm still not producing enough with the dome and essentially a second fuel refinery that's going to be going in right there i'm still not going to have enough but that's where the i'll call it some more shells and then of course i was i wanted to showcase this as well so this is more or less like an advanced layout that i've come to figure out with solar panels and batteries and we'll get we'll get into this as well with the uh so more or less you take your power cables and you just literally plop down cannot click on anything tonight you plop a power cable down there and you just literally don't don't drag it just click it and it'll hook up and that's how you make like an advanced power array and i've done the same thing over here with the battery system which we have to kind of expand on that because they're not staying full anymore and you can do that with almost anything like i sat here and did it over here for the drone hub taking this power cable and shooting it through the drone hub and this essentially i already have this pre-planned out this is going to be where uh the medium dome sits it's literally going to sit right there so I can get that metal resource here, which is very high quality. But uh, yeah, that's that's about all I got going right now. I'm getting pretty decently caught up in a much shorter time frame. It's because I now know what I'm doing. I'm not struggling so much to learn the game. I've already got these set up. I'm going to start setting up more of these actually because I've already got the tech to... Uh, where they don't cost anything they don't cost maintenance or anything they just cost the resources to build 
So we're gonna start just kind of like plopping these things down actually. And uh, this will help with the early warning and the like anything that may go wrong. I actually have come to determine that these sensor towers are incredibly important because they will give you an incredibly early warning on the any sort of disasters that go on and they also give you just increased scans like I want you want to be able to scan things quicker well yeah so far I'm doing pretty good I, I feel like I've gotten almost caught up to where everything was minus we got to get the medium dome back up and then I can finally actually showcase you guys how I like to do the medium dome and all the other little advanced parts here but we're going to work on getting this small dome finished up and get some people in here. And then I'm going to go over my better findings with micromanaging the small domes. All right. I'll see you guys here in a second. All right, guys. So we're getting ready to call in our first citizens here. There was one thing that I really wanted to go over with you guys that I didn't know in the earlier videos. And that was this review button. Now, originally, I thought the review button was just like, you know, oh, this is the people that are coming and this and that and whatnot. This actually lets you pick and choose who you want on the shuttle, which I think is absolutely amazing. So we can actually sit here and go through everybody and pick and choose who we want to, you know, be on the shuttle, which is actually very helpful. That, it makes it so instead of having a shuttle of like 20 something scientists that you don't need you can actually sit here and pick and choose every little aspect that you want uh, you can sit there and do all the categories and traits and then you can sit there and actually manually pick who you want out of all that so it, it's just it's a great system here I'm going to go through real quick and try and find people that right now I just want more or less medics and farmers, botanists, hippie, we'll take a hippie, uh, let's see, vegan, I don't know what the vegan thing does yet, I've still yet to figure that out, so, alright, so it doesn't look like I'm going to get a whole lot of farmers here. Looks like majority of the people are all non-specialists. Okay, so that's that's 22 people. I also have a cargo rocket coming in with some more evaporators and a decent amount of resources. And that's just because we are going to have to expand upon this bit here. I also want to get some secondary storage devices over here. I really want to start pushing these storage. Actually, I'm going to upgrade that as well. And... Uh, like we want more oxygen I could actually do that right now and I actually have this really crazy design here that if I can get it to do it correctly let's see how is it rotated I, I think it's that and then yep and that and that and then we get a pipe, just a single pipe there. And now you have essentially water tower and two additional oxygen tanks. And that's kind of like how I like to do my setup. And it's just a one pipe segment. So that's pretty much, you'll start seeing those. At least I do at least that per colony dome or per dome. So water tank and then two oxygen tanks. Cause obviously I feel like breathing is more important than drinking. And that will give us a lot more room. And beyond that, I mean, I have a pretty decent foothold. I need some more power up and running. But like I said, with this system here, it's incredibly easy to expand. Now, this is all, this is actually costing a lot of metal. But I got to hurry up and get into the... There's that dust repulsion tech, and I need that. And that will cut the cost of metal way down. But so far we're doing pretty good. We have uh, we have our basic dome up, and uh, 
this is all pretty good here. We have a full capability of 36. That's eight being children. And we have the school. We have a farm in here, which I've already put soybeans on. And from my last, like, on the side plane, you would be amazed at what difference the soil quality makes. When it's at 50, it makes generic it makes the max it will make is 14 but the very first percentage just 60 that 34 goes up to like 38 and then if once you get that once you get that to 100 i was soybeans was making me i think almost like 60 food i mean it was insanity how quick food started coming in so i mean that is a huge key that i messed up last game was you need a farm from the very first dome to supply food. I mean, I had so much food in my solo game. It was just, it was crazy to say the least. But I'm feeling good so far. And we're going to wait for these shuttles to come in. And then I might start on the medium dome already. But we'll see how much time I have left. All right, so we have our 22 colonists coming in now. They're uh, you know, trying to avoid being hit by drones and whatnot. And we got our other, we got the supply shuttle in as well. So I now have more moisture evaporators and whatnot that I can build. But uh, right now we're gonna try and make sure our people don't do anything stupid as they, you know, power walk to their new dome. Seems like a few of them don't have jobs for some reason, which I'm. Um, uh, on all honesty, I don't think it really matters if they don't have a job. All right, no. So yeah, we have everything filled, which is actually good. So I'm not too worried that they don't have jobs right now, because in all honesty, I think they can. I don't think there's any sort of penalty as far as morale or anything goes from not having a job and it actually is good to have you know open slots because sooner or later once these people start retiring and whatnot they'll be open slots and they'll still have room so i've actually started to if i have some jobless people that's fine but so far we have almost a full dome also, the, the bigger thing is, is once I get the medium dome up, I could probably even put like a polymer factory, like right here or something, and that will give them something else to do. But we're going to try and get the medium dome up here, but right now we're going to try and just babysit the food situation, because I want to make sure that their food's good. And from there, I'm going to try and expand on this a little bit more. I've come to figure out that you can actually put these things a lot closer than I had them originally. Like, long as this structure, this, literally, this, like, little outline here, long as that's not within the white tiles, it will still make one. Or at this, when I upgrade it, it's 1.5. But, yeah, we still, you don't have to spam them out, like, it's nearly as far as I had them. Now, power is going to be a problem for nighttime but this is also something i wanted to showcase earlier was right now i'm using a lot of power at night the shifts and whatnot are actually really important so as you can see a lot of the buildings they don't have a night shift and that is actually very good that they don't have a night shift because without like if i turn for example like fuel production off that's a lot less power well i mean it went from like 11 to 10 but you get you get the concept is you can turn your stuff off at night and essentially you'll start to see that it's not requiring nearly as much power so what i've been doing with this system is is that once i have you know decent amount of stuff stored i actually turn my production off at night and it's actually a really great concept because then you're using the supplies from your tanks while also as you can see it's now down to 6.4 power so i mean it makes the solar panels a little bit more hefty early on 
because now you have a more dedicated power system for night and you can like i said you can swap these up for any shift really and it will go off of that you, you can see what shift it currently is by the highlighted color by the way and uh yeah i just i think it's a great system because that way the building itself isn't using power and this and that so you're saving power at night but i've also come to figure out that like once you have the polymer factory and all these buildings that take just a like crazy amount of power like uh the polymer factory takes two but if you upgrade it it takes like 10 and same thing with the metal extractor that five goes to like 15 when you upgrade it fuel refinery same thing like once you start upgrading them with the production increase the power goes through the roof but that's when you could be like all right i want these factories only working at this time or this shift and whatnot and then so it gives you more time to more or less charge your batteries at night or live off your batteries at night i should say this is of course only if you have solar panel like i have right now but that more or less i have a guaranteed like no i shouldn't run out of power at night because i now have everything set up so where nothing runs at night they you they use what they have supply wise in the tanks and it's i just i think it's a great system so that's something you guys can look into of picking when you want your power to be recharging at its highest point like uh what building is it I swear I have a building that doesn't work during the afternoon. Maybe not. But yeah, you can essentially set it up like that as well. You could have certain... Every shift, you'll have different power consumption. Like, I've come to notice once you have your factories, unless you change the shift time, early morning into afternoon is like your heaviest power consumption. And then, you know, midday to evening is hopefully not as heavy. And then nighttime, you can try and live off your batteries by turning off a lot of your stuff. But yeah, so far, that's where I've gotten. I just wanted to share that info with you guys of the whole shifts and whatnot. And trying to, like, disable your night shifts if you're using solar panels. So that way you're not killing your power system as hard. But we're going to try and get this medium dome up. And I think that will be it for this episode. But all right, let's get this dome up. All right, guys, so I just got the blueprint of the medium dome up right now. I don't actually have it fully done, and that's a dust devil there. <laughs> it's actually about to hit my rocket. I wonder what that will do to my rocket. Run up. Oh, it hit evaporated. Anyhow, the main reason I wanted to do this little segment here is I, ha I have this dust storm coming in, but I can see that up to two days away. And I th almost certain, at least from what I've been learning about these sensor towers, is that is because I have all these sensor towers. Now, if I got more and more sensor towers up, I would believe that it would let me know, like, way ahead of time. But I'm not 100% sure. Now, the dust storm is the bit that comes in and it will turn off your moxies and all your water evapor evaporators and whatnot. So we're gonna wanna really focus on our storage. I'm also having my miner out here trying to pick some stuff up because he's, we don't we don't have enough metal for anything right now. But so far the colonists are doing pretty good. They're getting the food up. They're now finally on the soybeans and they're a couple days out from that. But they're doing all right so far. Food's a little bit iffy, but I also extended on this. Like I said, this system is so easy to extend on. If it wasn't for this, <laughs> excuse me, boy. If it wasn't for this concrete field here, I would actually extend these out to about three deep. But we now we're down. We're only down to 1.1 at night, which that's actually really good. But a lot of that is these wind turbines that I popped up. And these wind turbines are have have a very high elevation boost on top of the upgrade. But the reason why I have an elevation boost is because I my original landing zone was up on this cliff. Like the rest of the map is lower than what it is. But see, the only problem with this is unless I can transfer through here, which I'm not too sure, 
I might need a tunnel system to get down to the lower parts of the map. Which the tunnel costs a decent amount, but we'll... Right now we have plenty of room to expand. And the only reason I'd ever probably need a tunnel to go down here is for resources and, like, all this tech over here. But, yeah, so far we're doing good. Like I said, this dome's gonna take a minute because I don't have enough metal. And right now, where is that pipe leak, man? Oh, uh, okay, see, so yeah, I see what the problem is. I really wish these guys would prioritize the dome here. Or this pipe leak. Okay, no, somebody did. I was gonna say, it's driving me a little bit nuts how you can't, like, prioritize there. But, alright, we're gonna try and keep getting this dome up. And once this dome's up, we'll be looking pretty good for this episode. I did, like I said, I did increase the production side of things. Tanks are doing so-so, but that's because of that leak right now. And we haven't had our first kid yet, so we're still on the... Uh, duration the founding stage but these guys are happy enough to have kids so we'll we'll see what happens here but all right we'll be back once the stone's up all right guys so we finally got the medium dome up and running here it took me a couple extra days game wise because I wanted to make sure that I had all this set up here and I wanted to expand upon water a little bit more so we now have about one, two. We have six water evaporators and we have a moxie. We're obviously going to need either more water evaporators or I'm going to have to tap into one of these waters here, which there's a lot of water there. But I'm pretty sure that has to be worked by a. Uh, I don't know, actually, I'm not too sure about that. It might have to be worked by people. Actually, it should say. No, okay, so it doesn't. It doesn't need to work be worked by people because it actually will tell you like metal extractor it says workers so that might be something I actually need to look into as a water extractor and so that way I have some form of increased water production because uh, as of right now water's decent but uh, once we put in a second farm over here not so much and the reason I want another farm over here is because the overall fact that it decreases the amount of oxygen needed in the dome so instead of a uh, straight up two that'll be like 1.7 like it is over here that's normally a one but with a farm in there it's 0 0.7 but all right guys i am feeling pretty good about making essentially the first comeback into this game like i said the with the first playthrough i really didn't know too much i literally was learning with you guys but now I have a better setup of the game. My power has been doing real good. My power lasts throughout the entire night and recharges by, you know, next day. And uh, we're going to get, you know, start showcasing this bit here. And I already have the idea for what I want to do here. So, uh, yeah, we're doing good. And my miners still mining out resources. But all right, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I know I'm actually really enjoying the game, even if I did get a little salty last episode. But, uh, all right, guys. Have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Bye, guys.